in case there's like conflicts of interest or with your clients or your colleagues. Mm -hmm. So what are the steps you would take to like um, prevent that from happening? Yeah, I guess it's best to be direct about it. So if you can see a conflict of interest possibly arising, then it's best to just tell your client outright and then I guess tell them of their options. So, you know, um, I'm, I'm obviously going to be conflicted working for you in this matter. Yeah. So I can refer you on to my colleague or perhaps a different firm. So it's best to just be upfront about it. So have you ever been in a situation like that? Because like in my personal experience, I've been in a situation where um, I've had to work in a childcare environment. Mm -hmm. And then there's been another educator who would be like, um, oh, that child's naughty. But um, I'd be like, no, she's not. She's just, you just don't understand her. You don't know her background, her culture. Mm -hmm. So you need that information. So have you ever been in a situation where something like that has arisen? Uh... What exactly do you mean? Um, in a situation where your colleague is saying, I don't know, um, something about, like, this is wrong, but you, you have a different aspect to it. So oh, okay. you disagree with okay. what so, they're So you're disagreeing with your colleague? Yeah. Mm, well, I guess when you disagree with your colleague, then it's best to obviously voice your concerns like you yeah. did and, you know, try to, try to come to a mutual arrangement that's beneficial for both of you. Because, you know, they're your colleague, you're going to have to work with them. You yeah. obviously don't want to have too much conflict yeah. with them. But at the same time, if you think they're wrong, then you should tell them. And then, yeah. you know, try, try to work it out from there. And if you, can't, if you can't resolve the conflict, then perhaps it's better to, I guess, in your situation, let someone else take care of the kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there's the fact of misinformation and, like, how, how like, you, get, you process the information through. So you get a thorough understanding and sometimes people are misunderstood so you get the wrong information mm -hmm. so and uh, well, like what are the consequences to, to that for like your firm as me yeah. <laughs> misinformation well yeah. misinformation as a lawyer could you know potentially lead to a very bad situation for example if you don't understand your client's instructions and then you do something that causes them a lot of financial loss so then that's, I guess, professional negligence. That's why it's important to, I guess, have effective communication between you and your client so you understand exactly what it is that needs to be done. So a way you can do that is, for example, if someone gives you instructions, you can repeat it back to them and then get them to confirm. Or you can ask them, you know, what do you think if I do this? Or what do yeah. you think if I do this? As opposed to just, I guess, imposing what you want to do on them. Like, oh, yep. it goes back to fostering relationships. Yeah, like, relationships oh, and all that. Yeah, right. ultimately, you just, if, if, if there's any ambiguities at all, like something you don't understand, then don't remain quiet about it. Just voice your concerns to your client. Um, well, we're talking about clients, like what type of clients do you work with? Like mm. their, their cultures, their background, their nationalities? And... Well, I work at T Lawyers and we're situated at an Anala. And Inala is probably, I'd say, 90% Vietnamese. Yeah. So a lot of our clients, 90% of our clients are Vietnamese. So so in that case, would there be like language barriers? Yes. So there'd be both language and cultural barriers because obviously a, you know, old elderly Vietnamese person wouldn't know much about the law yeah. and their English wouldn't be very good. Yeah. So there'll be difficulties to, to communicate with them. Yeah. yeah. So then... As for me, I can speak in fluent Vietnamese, so it's, it's, I can overcome that barrier. Yeah. But say for one of my Chinese-speaking colleagues who can't speak Vietnamese, then I guess what they would do is assess the situation, you know, assess that person's understanding of just basic English. And if they think that that person can't you know, understand them well enough to give us proper instructions, then that colleague would then refer that Vietnamese client onto someone who can speak Vietnamese. So I guess it's just analyzing whether or not that barrier will prevent you from achieving what, what the client wants. Yeah. And if it does, then you should, I guess, leave it out of your hands and pass it on to someone who's capable of overcoming that barrier. So I guess you could, you know, you'll encounter that in social work. Yeah. You might encounter like, say, a, um, a client that's from an Arabic background. Yeah, yeah. So then I'll have to like do some studies about their culture, like yeah, what yeah. not to 
upset them. Yeah, and that's disrespect, right. Yeah. Disrespect, so I have to like do pre-research and mm -hmm. I'll have yeah what I need. That's right. Um, and also, you know, if language is obviously going to be a problem, then you might want to have an interpreter or yeah. perhaps a colleague that can speak their language. So, yeah, okay, thanks. Thank you for um, taking the time to participate in this interview with me. Mm -hmm. That's so, all right. Yeah. Thank you.